Welcome to another Parent Teacher Video Lesson from the EarlyGiftedManual.com, a free website for homeschooled children three to seven years old and their parents that promotes and develops giftedness at an early age. I am Gary Blank, the creator of that site and your host and facilitator for this video and all of the videos in my educational program. As the video lessons are designed to work in conjunction with the program on my website, I ask you to, at some point, click on the URL link in the description box below, and this action will take you to the earlygiftedmanual.com. By doing that, you will be able to put this lesson and all of the video lessons here on my channel in the proper context of the total program that I am presenting to you and your child. Welcome to part two of lesson six, and this is a lesson on journaling. And uh, let's pick up right where we left off. As you can see, last time I left you, there was no drawing, and I just made a funny little drawing uh, on this sheet so you could get an idea of what <laughs> you might see. Uh, and of course, the, the possibilities are endless, and I'm sure you realize that. So. Uh, now he has a completed page. What are we going to do with it? Well, let's put it in a binder. We're going to start out by using this three-hole punch. And uh, hopefully you have one. If not, you can get them fairly inexpensively. Put some holes in it. And here's a binder, a nice blue binder. Of course, uh, your child can choose any color he or she likes. Uh, so, we'll open up the binder like this, horizontally, and can place the page right in the binder. And of course, uh, these pages will be put in in chronological order, so the next one will go behind it, and so on and so forth. And, uh, um, of course, you need to, to explain that to her. Uh, and of course, they're all dated, so uh, you know they are in chronological order. Um, and now I think uh, once you do this, uh, the binder needs a cover page. So let's uh, address that right now. All right, and uh, here's here's one option you have for a cover page. Uh, I made this on. Uh, obviously on my computer in Microsoft Word. It took about two minutes. This could make a nice cover page uh, for your child's journal. Uh, of course, she could color it in and decorate any way she wants. Or you may have one of those wonderful kids who l will look at you and say, I'm gonna do it myself. I don't need any help from you. And of course, that's great. They can make their own on a blank sheet of paper. So, um, you can install that. This is, of course, is a view binder, so it goes right under the plastic here. And uh, there you have it. Emily's Journal. And, of course, uh, like I said, there are many options for the cover also. So um, I'm going to put this out of the way right now, take, her, take our page back out. And... I think at this time I could say that uh, while you're going through this process of, of teaching your child how to journal, uh, of course you have to start out with maximum support. And then as, uh, as he or she gets better at it and more skilled, you can gradually withdraw the support. And of course if your child needs another sheet of paper, uh, uh, and the one page isn't enough, those three or four lines you see here, of course you can just add a, another page to it and of course uh, make sure the date is on there too so it doesn't become an orphan and uh, some kids will really write sometimes even going into a, a third page and hopefully your child uh, will be one of those um, all right let's uh, switch uh, gears a little bit here and now we're going to look at journaling with self-selected topics. In other words, your child no longer needs the prompt. Um, 
she she can do it on her own and of course she's going to start with uh, a blank sheet um, one thing th that I want to show you at this point uh, is you know how to make corrections on these um, let me get this one back here let's say your child's really doing a lot of writing on her own now and, and you're going to uh, make some corrections to kind of help her along. Um, a nice way to make these is uh, blue pen. A red pen is kind of garish. It's kind of scary to a kid. Uh, for example, you know, this lowercase i, you could put an actual upper, uh, capital I there, which is where it belongs. You could... Uh, I'm just going to pick out a few examples, not a lot here. This word is live. Um, you could uh, help her by placing a period there, perhaps. Uh, hide. So you get the idea here, whiskers. That's a, that's a good one. So you write very small. You know, you don't want to write big. That'll really take away from what your child is doing, and they and they won't like it. Actually, here's another period. So very gently you correct, but at the same time, once your child becomes a, a better writer, you you also want to be thorough. So that's how you make corrections. And of course, uh, when he or she finally is working on their own, uh, you want to be available to help them, but they probably won't appreciate you hovering over them. So uh, you need to also take that into consideration. Another option uh, your child has is to keep a word journal. Uh, some kids love to do this. Um, basically, uh, it's, of course, it's, it's separate from the regular journal, and, and it's an optional activity, but uh, you might want to show it to your child and uh, see if she's interested. Um, you know, one of the reasons why kids like doing these is they like to show off a little bit, and that's okay. They want to, they want to show you how many words they know, how many words they've learned to read and to write. So here's how you would set up a, a word journal. You want to have a page for each beginning sound, and let's say this is the sound, mmm. So uh, your child may do this. Take a, a nice... Uh, marker here, a nice broad, uh, a magic marker that makes a nice broad line, and maybe do capital M, lowercase m, and uh, he may want to do some other illustrations up here. And then he can just start uh, listing words he knows that begin with mmm, the mmm sound. So uh, let's try to think of a few here. How about, uh, how about, mm, eh, man. And of course, uh, just like uh, his regular writing, when he adds words, he wants to uh, finger space. Let's see, what's another good mm word? Mick. Or he might have a friend named Michael, and he can list all of the, the words that he knows that begin with the mm sound, of course. Um, uh, you can add sheets to this sheet. Uh, we just showed that before, and uh, that would be the mm section of his word journal. And you can, of course, get another uh, three-ring binder and make a cover sheet and start one of those. So that's what a word journal looks like. And I think the last thing I want to say here um, and and I know this is a possibility, so I have to bring it up. So I just want to say that uh, there might be some of you out there who are thinking, well, you know, 
this seems like uh, really being tough on my, on my kid. I, you know, I just want to let them write freely without correction for a while, and then maybe later I'll come in and uh, help them. Well, I have to uh, sound a word of caution about that because um, any bad habits they get, and there will be many if you're not working with them, um, they get ingrained and they're very hard. Uh, to, it's very difficult to change those habits. I can tell you this from being a tutor for a long time. That's, a, that's one of the toughest challenges of being a tutor. Kids get into habits, not very good ones, and they like them and they don't want to give them up. So if you're thinking along those lines that uh, what I just said, that, well, I'm going to let my child just write freely for a while and then I'll come in later, uh, you may want to rethink that. <laughs> so there's my word of caution. All right, that's part two of lesson six on journaling, and I'll see you in lesson seven.